Hello, my name is Uma. In this video, I'll be taking you through my home office programming setup. Timestamps and links to everything I'll mention will be down in the description. Let's get into it. Starting on this side of the office, the first thing you see when you walk in are these spec boards I picked up from IKEA. The official name is the IKEA SCADI spec board. They are great for storage and organization, but also serve as a decorative piece. I opted for these instead of drawers because if I had drawers, I'd be more likely to keep and hoard stuff that I no longer use. With the pegboard, there is a finite amount of space on the wall, forcing me to keep only the items I need and use regularly. They come in white, black, and the wooden color I have here. There are also several attachments to store different types of items. Above the pegboards are three posters I picked up from the code.xyz. I am a software engineer and I figured adding some software related items to my space would be a nice touch. The first poster is a crossword puzzle of software stating all the properties that good software should have. The second is code is art written in words with the binary translation of the letters underneath. The third poster is a collection of hello world written in the most popular programming languages using the Dracula VS Code theme. This one has a special meaning because if you've programmed before, you know that print hello world is usually the first code you're taught to write. For me, it signifies the beginning and how simple everything starts off before it gets complicated and you're stuck debugging code for the last four hours only to realize the problem was a tiny semicolon. At the bottom is a simple three-tier shelf I picked up from Target. I use it to store files, documents, books, and other miscellaneous items. Nothing special here. What is special, however, is this levitating moon lamp I picked up from Amazon. It looks futuristic and this is the way I think it works. I believe the ball is 3D printed and has a magnet and a bulb inside it. There is also a magnet on the base. To turn it on, you have to balance the ball on top of the magnet on the base. It takes a little bit of skill to master. Once it's balanced, there is a transfer of energy from the base to the ball. The ball lights up and it just keeps spinning. I don't know the exact science behind it, but it's pretty cool. It has three light modes. First is the orange you see here, then there is white, and the final mode is where the light slowly changes from orange to white and back to orange and keeps going in the loop. It's a unique item and it's usually the first thing that gets everyone's attention when they first come into the office space. Moving over to this side of the office, I'll break this part into three sections. Furniture, lights, and electronics. Starting off with furniture, on top of the wall are these floating shelves I picked up from Amazon. There were a few options but I got these because they closely match the color of my desk. They have a maximum weight of 30 pounds, which is overkill for me but nice to know I have it if I ever want to put something up there. I currently have these fake plants and some items seated up there but they are good to hold anything you want. The only drawback to these is that they need to be drilled into the wall, which clearly I didn't have a problem with. If you can drill into your wall, there are a few options you can get that mount to the wall using commando strips. My desk is the Autonomous AI Smart Desk Core XL. It's a sit-stand desk I picked up around two years ago and have been using since. I initially got the glossy stock countertop in the classic size but later switched to the XL matte countertop because the glossy one shows every single scratch and I found it a little bit small for me. On the right and left side of the desk are these drawers I picked up from Amazon. They come as a pair and a very low profile. When they are closed, you can barely see them. They help me keep the desk decluttered. I use them to store smaller items. The drawer on the right holds pens and markers. On the left side of the desk is a headphone holder that can hold up to two headphones. I currently use it to store one, but great to know there's a second place if I need it. My chair is also from Autonomous AI. It's the Autonomous AI Ergo Chair Pro. I picked it up around the same time I got the desk a couple of years ago and it has served me very well. I did scuff the top of the chair when I was moving it across the country, and that's the mark you see right here. Other than that, it's been perfect. The armrests are adjustable, the headrest is adjustable, the seat tilt is adjustable, and you can adjust how far front or back you want the seat to go. As always, the height is adjustable. The backrest goes all the way down, stopping in several positions. You can also adjust the tension, the slack, and a few other things. This isn't an ad or a sponsorship. I just like the chair and it's been working great for me. The final piece of furniture is this monitor riser I picked up from TG Mastery on Etsy. Like the hanging shelves, I wanted a riser to match the color of my desk and at the time, 
This was the only one I could find. It's 43 inches long and 8.7 inches wide with hanging removable shelves so you can adjust it the way you want. It's a monitor riser but I mainly use it to hide cables in the back and to elevate my computers. Moving over to lights. I picked up these Govi Smart LED lights and mounted them to the back of my monitor. They are two separate lights that can be controlled by the app via Bluetooth or through Alexa or Google Home. The individual bars can be different color and the segments within the bars can be different colors as well. They come with some cool features like music mode and much more. They were so good that I picked up these corner floor lamps from Govi as well. They are the Govi RGB IC corner lamps. They are identical to the light bars in terms of features and can be controlled via the app as well. Since all three devices are from Govi, you can group them in the app, controlling all of them simultaneously, setting things like color, mode, schedules for when they turn on and off, and much more. Overall, they look and they work great, and I recommend them to anyone who's looking to add some lights to their setup. My monitor light bar is the Melifo Cov monitor bar. It's controlled by this dial. You can turn it on or off and also control the temperature and the brightness. It has this RGB mode on top of the lamp as well. Moving over to electronics. My main monitor is the LG 38WN75CB. It is a 38 inch curved ultra wide monitor with a 21 by nine IPS display. I used to have a 49 inch ultra wide monitor, but I recently downsized because I wanted a change. And since switching over, I found this to be the perfect monitor for me in terms of productivity. I can have all the windows I need open, but not feel like they're lost or way too far to one side or the other, which is an issue that I had with the 49 inch ultra wide. The 21 by nine aspect ratio is also better than the 39 by nine on the 49 inch because it gives you more vertical real estate for the windows that you have opened. The monitor is mounted to the Wally single mount gas spring arm. It's fully adjustable with channels built in for cable management. It is VESA compatible and rated for 33 pounds. It's the same mount I used for the 49 inch ultra wide monitor, which was really heavy and the mount had no problem handling it. My secondary monitor is the U-Perfect Truly 4K monitor. I originally picked it up to be used mainly for screen recordings, but I found that it has been a very helpful addition. I can drag windows that I want to be constantly visible, like a web browser during web development down here, giving me enough room on the main monitor for other windows. When I travel for longer trips and have to take my computer, I usually carry the monitor with me. It's the size of an iPad Pro and fits in my laptop bag and works very well. To the left of the mini monitor is the Elgato Stream Deck. This is one of the best items I've picked up for the setup in terms of productivity. Different people use it for different things, but I mainly use it for shortcuts to open apps and nested folders that I use often. I always set my current project folder here, so if I download something and need to drag and drop it, I can simply tap this instead of double clicking down the rabbit hole to find the folder. It also opens web pages and you can configure the buttons to do specific things in specific apps. They come in different configurations from six macro keys all the way to 32 macro keys. My microphone is the Rode NT1 paired with the Rode AI1 interface. I got them together as a bundle, but you can also get them individually. The microphone connects to the interface, then the interface connects to the computer via USB. My webcam is my secondary camera, which is the Canon M50 Mark II, and it's connected to my computer via the Elgato Cam Link. Together, the microphone and the webcam look and sound like this. This is a test for how my video calls currently look. As you can see, I'm using a DSLR for my webcam, so I get to have this really, really cool view. Um, this call is directly recorded from Zoom. If you can see on the screen right here, it's on Zoom. So this is what most of the people um, who I have phone calls with see. The light in the office is not the best light for recording because it's directly above my head, so you won't be able to see much. That's why I've supplemented it with one of my studio lights. So once I turn it on, I get to have this really, really cool view. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be sure to answer any questions that you have. I have them connected to the computer via this switch so I can easily switch the connection between my work computer and my personal computer. My speakers are the PreSonos Eric 3.5. They connect to the computer via the audio jack and the audio levels can be adjusted on here too as well. They're seated on these adjustable speaker stands I picked up from Amazon. My mouse is the MX Master 3 from Logitech, which has been out for some time. The wooden palm rest is from Keychron, and my keyboard is a 98% layout mechanical keyboard from Royal Clodge. 
This keyboard came with brown switches, which I swapped for looped switches from Pandas, and so far, they feel and sound amazing. The whole setup is powered by the 16GB M1 Mac Mini. It is the first generation of Apple Silicon. Overall, the computer is powerful and has handled everything I needed it to, from video editing to coding and much more. The one regret I have is getting small storage. When I picked this up, I got the 256GB storage option, which at the time felt like enough space because I planned to edit from an external SSD, which I do. The external SSD is connected to the Mac via this USB-C hub here. In here, I have a 4TB Samsung SSD that I edit my videos out of. It worked fine for a while until I started running out of storage because I underestimated the space editing and programming apps would take. Luckily for me, this USB-C hub has space for multiple SSDs, so I got this 1TB NVMe SSD, copied all the applications over to it and made it my bootable drive. This storage solution works for now, but I've ran into minor performance issues when copying or deleting large number of files. Next time I get a computer, especially one that I plan to use for programming and editing, I won't be getting any storage smaller than one terabyte, even if I plan to edit from an external drive. There you have it, that's the whole setup. As I stated earlier, links to everything I've mentioned are down in the description. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to get to them. If you enjoy content like this or programming content in general, then consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and catch you on the next one. Until then. Woo!